Well, good morning, family. What would you say if I told you that I knew the key to happiness? Do you think I should share it? Don't worry, I will. Last week, we talked about reconciling relationships. And today, as we read the words that immediately follow last week's gospel, the theme remains the same. Let's listen to Jesus tell a story about relationships and how we are supposed to treat people. And that does have something to do with happiness. Are you intrigued? Well, let's look at Matthew chapter 18, verses 21 through 35. Hear the word of the Lord. Peter came to Jesus and asked, Sir, how often should I forgive a brother who sins against me? Seven times? No, Jesus replied, seventy times seven. The kingdom of heaven can be compared to a king who decided to bring his accounts up to date. In the process, one of the debtors was brought in who owed him 10,000 bags of gold. He couldn't pay, so the king ordered him sold for the debt, also his wife and children and everything he had. But the man fell down before the king, his face in the dust, and said, Oh, sir, be patient with me, and I will pay it all. Then the king was filled with pity for him, and released him, and forgave his debt. But when the man left the king, he went to a man who owed him one hundred coins, and grabbed him by the throat, and demanded instant payment. The man fell down before him, and begged to give him a little time. Be patient, and I will pay it, he pled. But his creditor wouldn't wait. He had the man arrested and jailed until the debt would be paid in full. Then the man's friends went to the king and told him what had happened. And the king called before him the man he had forgiven and said, You evil-hearted wretch! Here I forgave you all that tremendous debt just because you asked me to. Shouldn't you have mercy on others just as I had mercy on you? Then the angry king sent the man to the torture chamber until he had paid every last penny due. So shall my heavenly Father do to you if you refuse to truly forgive your brothers. This is the word of God for you, the people of God. So we say, thanks be to God. The angry king sent the man to the torture chamber until he had paid every last penny due. So shall my heavenly Father do to you if you refuse to truly forgive your brothers. This is not good news for those of us who have trouble forgiving, is it? One day a woman went to her pastor because she was holding some very strong resentments against the men in her life. Her father, it seemed, preferred her brother over her. In fact, he favored the brother so much that he gave him the family business. And when she was down on her luck after her divorce, her brother only offered her a menial job in the family business. Her ex-husband, it seemed, was wonderfully successful with a huge income, but he nickeled and dimed the child support and alimony he owed to her. Her two boys resented the divorce. They blamed the split on their mother, and they constantly told her how life would be better if they could just live with their dad. No wonder she was hurt, angry, and resentful, right? And what was worse, the reason she was angry and resentful was because she was paying attention. She analyzed her situation, and, and she read it right. Her pastor listened carefully and said, You really are justified in being angry. But what is being angry doing to you? The woman poured out a litany of pains, health problems, loneliness, and depression. That's when her pastor suggested that she try forgiveness. But sadly, she was unable or unwilling to forgive. As time went on, the men in her life did not change their behavior toward her, and her health and well-being continued in their downward spiral, all while she was completely justified in her anger. We think we need vindication when we get injured, or offended, don't we? The law has ways to assess responsibility for injury. Courts can calculate the degree of damage that an injury has done. Judges determine payment to repair or compensate for any damage. But no one who has ever gone through a difficult lawsuit leaves satisfied, do they? We even have a bumper sticker that says, don't get mad, get even, right? 
Someone once said that the way most of us imitate God is by claiming that vengeance is ours, which is exactly opposite of what God said. Now, it could be that the torture mentioned in our text today is simply what happens to us when we refuse to forgive someone. A man was deeply in debt. He owed his king millions of dollars in gold. In a magnanimous gesture, the king forgave the entire debt. The newly forgiven man went out and he met a man who owed him a paltry sum. But instead of showing the mercy that was shown to him, he grabbed the man by the throat and demanded immediate payment. He failed to forgive. And when the king heard about this awful turn of events, he sentenced the forgiven man to prison, to the torture chamber, until he could somehow pay his unpayable astronomical debt. So it seems to me that the choice we have is whether we will be right and miserable or wrong and miserable, or whether we will be forgiving and happy, right? Wouldn't you rather be happy? There are some very clear words from Jesus about this very subject that we pray every week. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. You see, the key to joy and happiness is forgiveness. Think about that. The key to joy and happiness is forgiveness. See, I told you I'd share it with you. It seems to work this way. First, when we forgive, we join with God in doing God's essential work. And doing the will and work of God brings fulfillment to our lives. Secondly, forgiveness brings peace to our relationships. Anyone who's ever raised kids can tell stories of dealing with the injuries, offenses, and disobedience of children, right? Without forgiveness, you can't successfully raise kids, can you? Listen, a marriage can't survive without mutual forgiveness, right? Spouses can't keep from injuring each other. I'm scheduled to perform a wedding in a few weeks, and I think that from now on, every time I conclude a marriage ceremony, I might say, you may kiss the person who will offend and injure you time and time again. And if you want this marriage to work, you'll have to forgive them every time. Because without forgiveness, the offenses become injuries, and those injuries, if left unattended and unforgiven, will become fatal. Do you remember the story of the prodigal son? Jesus told us about an ungrateful young man. He left his father and family and squandered all of his money. When he returned home, his father surprised him by generously and freely forgiving him. Now, the way Jesus told it, the story lacks a proper ending. But if we could go back and ask the prodigal son to recap the story for us, I bet he might say something like this. I did things that betrayed all of my father's values, but he kept on forgiving me. Finally, I did something that was so bad that I was convinced he would never forgive me, that he would never want to see me again. But he forgave me. And that's when I realized that there was nothing that I could do to make my father stop loving and forgiving me. That realization, knowing that I was loved no matter what I did, meant that I was free from trying to earn my father's affection. That story is an illustration of God's response to us. He forgives us. He loves you no matter what. And the crucifixion of Jesus is God's ultimate act of love and forgiveness. What God did through Jesus was pure love. It was his way of saying to all of humanity, there is nothing that you can do. There is no sin so great, no offense so devastating that it will end my love for you. According to today's parable, it frustrates God when we don't share the love and forgiveness that we have received. So let me give you some advice, okay? Forgive somebody and do it today. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Good and gentle and forgiving God. Your forgiveness is total. No notebook, no tape recorder, no post-it note to remind you of that moment when we broke your heart. You take our confession, offered with hands outstretched and gently, like the loving Heavenly Father that you are, you put it to one side to be forgotten. No grudges, no itching for judgment, no resentment, no ill will. Not like us who find it easy to say sorry, but so hard to forgive, absolutely. Forgive us, Father, 
that we are often more willing to accept forgiveness than to forgive, more willing to accept your love than to share it with those who have hurt us. Teach us to forgive as you forgive. You made us out of love and you created us to love. So help us to love and to forgive others, others who don't look like us, others who don't vote like us, others who don't believe like us, others who don't speak like us, others who don't do anything the way we do. Help us to love and to forgive no matter what. And now using the words debts and debtors, let us pray with boldness the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As always, thank you. I really do appreciate it when you join me. I hope these words were helpful to you. And if they were, will you like, review, and share this episode? If you leave a good review, it will help other people to find and to benefit from these devotional thoughts. And by the way, if you have a need or prayer request, please leave a message in the comments section and be assured that I will be praying for you and for your need. Now, this week, your job is to love and forgive at least three people and make sure at least one of them doesn't deserve it. Why? Because everyone needs love and forgiving and everyone needs to know that God loves and forgives them no matter what. Remember, with Jesus, we always, always, always have hope. Now receive these words of benediction today. May the Lord bless you and protect you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his face to you and grant you his peace. Amen? Amen.